Hello and welcome to this brand new video tutorial series on Roland Zen Beats. My name is Jay and I'm a music producer, instrumentalist and composer and a certified technical trainer and I love making music and learning everything I can about interesting tools that help me make music. I'm not affiliated with Roland Corporation in any way nor am I receiving any form of monetary compensation. Ultimately, I really like making music and helping people learn how to make music and the satisfaction that comes with that. So I'm going to be covering a lot of topics in this series. And first and foremost, we're going to cover key settings and preferences you can set to make your workflow more efficient. And I'm assuming that you already have installed Zen Beats on at least one device and you've already gone through the registration process, created your Roland Cloud account. Uh, if you need help understanding the registration process, there's a great video Roland produced. I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's move on and talk about key settings. All right, so let's get started learning about the basics of Zen Beats. And I know everybody is just chomping on the bit to start making music, but some of these preliminary things are really worth knowing about. So thanks for taking the time to join me. Um, at the bottom of the page here, and this is referred to as the Zen Beats homepage, you're going to see three different icons and the first icon to the lower left is how you can create a new song. Uh, if you have existing projects you want to be able to open up and continue to work on, you can choose Open Song and get access to all of your different projects. The lessons are going to give you access to a bunch of self-guided tutorials that allow you to learn the interface in more detail. And so you'll see a number of lessons here on all devices. On mine, I don't have very many because I'm using a locked version of the PC, Zen Beats. Um, but for those of you who happen to snag a free download of the iOS or Android version of Zen Beats that's fully unlocked, you'll have a number of tutorials here to work your way through and to help you learn more about the interface and how to proceed with different tasks and so forth that are necessary to create a musical production. So I'm going to go back to my home page by clicking on the arrow in the upper left. And now I'm back on the home page. And I'm going to take you into the shopping cart now. Uh, the shopping cart, of course, is where you purchase additional sounds. But you can also look at your unlocks. You can see if there are any offers available to you uh, and so forth. So here you can see that, oh, Zen Beats is free, full version. Oh, and here's some free Cloud Academy training with a live instructor to learn more about Zen Beats. And here's a drum machine tutorial, an advanced drum machine tutorial. So there's lots of nice things you can actually access from this banner. Uh, but beyond that, you can see on this home tab, we have lots of different sounds and presets. If I want to be able to filter them into their appropriate categories, uh, if I just want to see the loops, I can click the loops option over on the left and then this is all the audio file loop material that I can purchase from this store. Um, down below the loops are presets and purchasing them, listening to them and so forth are very similar. Um, so let's say I wanted to check out the Roland Classic drums here uh, and this costs $4. Um, but I want to preview it first. I can click on the little play button here. And I can hear the sound. If I'm intrigued by it, I can learn more about it by clicking on the thumbnail. And it says here that this expansion includes 10 drum kits, 55 one-shot drum hits, and 25 drum patterns. And they're all taken straight from the TR-808, 909, and 707 respectively. If I like what I hear and I want to purchase this, I can put it in my cart by clicking the Add button. Now it's in the cart. And you can see down below, on the lower left, I have an item in my cart. So unlocks are going to show you what's available as far as unlocking additional features. So I haven't unlocked really anything here in the Windows version, so I can unlock Windows for $50. And to do that, um, I can click the Add button. I'm not going to. And if I want to know really what that means, I can click on the actual tile here. And it says it's going to give me all the bundled instruments, effects, features, plus 500 megs of content, 
plus it's going to unlock the track effects and missing mixing limitations and offer vst support for virtual instruments so that's great and it's fifty dollars um, but at the moment i'm a little too cheap to purchase that now if i could i would actually purchase the ultimate unlock uh, it's 150 bucks, right? That's a pretty steep price tag for a lot of people these days. But what you get is like all access, all devices, fully unlocked. You get all the different loop packs, all the different preset packs uh, for a total of over 6,000 sounds. So it really expands, gives you a massive collection of sounds to work with to start to craft your productions. So pretty cool I thought it was worth mentioning and the offers tab is going to give you offers in this case it's offering you a subscription to Roland cloud and that's where you can go to download like virtual instruments for use in your projects um, my stuff this is important if you want to verify exactly what you've purchased and what you have for Zen beats in your system um, for instance, I've got the VIP expansion. Not sure how this actually happened, but I've got it. It's one of the unlocks. And then I can see which loop packs I've got and which preset packs I've got. Um, they're all fully 100% loaded into my system. If I find I'm not using them, I need to free up some space. I can delete these packs. I can also reload them if it turns out maybe that I feel like I've got a file that's not playing right. It seems corrupt. I can start fresh, reload uh, my loops, my presets, and then start again to see if that fixes the issue. So that's where you see what you've got going with Zen Beats. And then finally, on the lower left is the cart, and I'm gonna click on that. And that's got my Roland Classic drums out here. And I still can turn back, which I'm gonna do. I'm not going to continue to process a payment for this. I'm just gonna remove this I've had second thoughts and now I'm going to go back to the home page by clicking on the arrow button on the upper left. So now we're back on the home page and what I really want to focus on during this particular video are the settings that you'll need to apply to make your system work. Now if you're on a device like an Android or iOS device, you're not going to have any problems. It's just going to work right away. But for us PC and Mac users, there are some things we have to configure. So let's take a look at that. If I click on the hamburger menu on the left, I can determine the language I want to use for the system. Um, I can sign out of Rolling Cloud because once you register for Rolling Cloud, you're kind of signed in when you use Zen Beats. If you want to sign out, this is how you do that. This is where I go to open a song. And this is where I go to adjust settings that are very important. So let's click on the settings option or tap on the settings option and take a look. Now, first of all, we have the interface tab and that's going to allow us to adjust the window scale factor by a percent, which means that we can adjust the size of the window that Zen Beats takes up proportionately to our um, monitor. So if you want to scale it down, you can. If you need to scale it up, you can. But in either event, if you need to go full screen, I can always do that. There's always a full screen toggle we'll take a look at in just a few minutes here. Um, I can adjust the button height, of course, the virtual button height that's talking about. Um, I can enable animations, which means that as I'm watching my loops and clips and so forth, I can see the MIDI data and the waveforms displaying. Um, it asks me, you know, as far as building loops, when I'm in the loop builder view, how do I want to work with the patterns and there's a draw pattern and wave scroller option both or you can choose either one independently I'm not really sure what the differences are to tell you the truth I just leave it at the default and it seems to work great the wave scroller speed is gonna determine how fast loops cycle through the actual animations cycle so um, some people prefer to change the speed, slow it down or speed it up, and that's how you do that. The color scheme is really worth going into. Right now we're using Storm, and that's the default skin, but there are some other skins that are pretty cool too, like I myself am pretty partial to 808 Nights and 909 Days. I like them based on the environment that I'm editing in. 
So I'm going to click away there, but you can play around with those skins and see which ones you think are the coolest, the easiest to work with, the easiest to tell what's going on. Now the general tab, and this is going to have some general information about your device, like, you know, your device name, my computer's name administrator. Uh, the user content folder is going to be, you know, if you want to output your product, your music, if you want to turn that, convert that, render it as a two track file or render stems or, or export MIDI data, where is that going to go? Where are you going to find that once that's all done? And so this is the path here, whatever it says in your system, that's where you're going to find all of your output there. So um, new song defaults, I can either start in loop builder view or I can start in timeline view. There's an auto save function here. I can shut that off, which I do not recommend, or I can change the interval. I can show an on-screen keyboard. I really don't need that. I can disable the screen server, which I really highly recommend. Um, and then also we can determine here how we want to handle our updates and our downloads of our samples, our sounds, our, you know, that kind of thing. And do we want it to happen automatically or do we want to have to click a button and make it happen manually? So those are some general options you've got available. And again, these are defaults that apply to all of your projects. Audio, this is super important for the Mac and PC users because we often need to interface an external device like an audio interface or a MIDI interface and you know to work within the environment of ZenBeat. So we wanna make sure we're choosing the right options. So here's where you choose your audio device and if you've got a number of them, you have to figure out which one it really is, which one you want to use, and so on. So you might have to refer to your owner's manual for that device if you need to for more information. Um, we also have something called buffer size, which controls um, latency. So what that means is lower sizes, lower buffer sizes, decrease latency, and higher buffer sizes increase latency and latency is the amount of time it takes for a note to sound after you press the keyboard or after you you know take the action how long does the reaction take to that action and um, the longer it is the more difficult it is to stay in sync with your production so um, you know starting off at 512 samples I think is a good starting point if you find that your productions are glitching through playback and so forth and stuttering, then you can increase the buffer size here as well. And uh, oftentimes, if you increase it to like 2048, that's a good thing. Um, now down below, since we're configuring audio devices, we're configuring the output channels as well. So again, refer to your owner's manual. If you need more information about the various output channels, you can you know which ones you need to choose to get the correct selection. Multi-core support is just as you would imagine. If you've got a multi-core processor, it's gonna take advantage of those efficiencies uh, in your projects. Now the next tab is MIDI input, and this is for those of you who wanna interface like a control surface or a MIDI keyboard or some other type of device that you want to control the inner workings of Zenbeats with. So I happen to have a Roland A300 Pro keyboard. It's a control surface keyboard that I have interfaced. So, but I have to choose it. I have to make sure that I'm choosing the right options here for my situation. So again, owner's manual time for some of you. For mine, it just found it. Uh, for the audio and MIDI, it just it found the right one magically. I don't know how, but it figured it out on its own. Um, but you're going to want to come back and kind of check and make sure things are routed appropriately. Um, down below, there are some things that are more meaningful to really hardcore MIDI users. Um, the MIDI output, this is something you're going to want to route in the event that you want to be able to trigger outboard instruments. Like if you've got a sound module or a sampler or something that's a hardware device and you want to be able to trigger sounds from that using data coming from Zenbeats, you want to be able to configure the output as well. And finally, plugins, which I don't have any to show you here. In fact, that's part of the unlock, which I haven't paid for yet. 
And so, um, but plugins give you additional functionality. For instance, uh, they give you different, what they call virtual instruments. So I can bring like a, a horn section into my production or a grand piano or a string section. I do that by using VST instruments and it adds the functionality, it enhances your production value uh, when you use those. So that's part of the unlock, which is likely why I'll probably pay for it at some point. But those are our settings that I wanted to go through with you. So I wanted to record this addendum so that my fellow iOS users and potentially Android users can benefit. And I wanted to go through the settings from that perspective. So we're going to head into the main menu and go to settings and we'll take a look at the similarities and, and minor differences between this and the PC Mac setup. So the interface options here are all the same. Everything from the window scale factor to the button height to all of the animation options are all the same. In the general area, the only thing that's really lacking is a path where all of your output, all of your exported audio and MIDI data is going to go. And that's because on an iOS device, and I'm sure probably on an Android device, it's going to ask you when you save the project or when you export data, where do you want to save it? Do you want it to go to files? Do you want it to go to iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive? Uh, it's pretty flexible in that regard, so that's why that is missing from this section in case anybody was interested. Um, the audio, all the same. I just let iOS do the thinking and it sets it all up for me. If I, I've experienced no latency, nothing like that. I've had multiple, multiple tracks running, you know, loops, um, instruments, effects, and I haven't had any issues. I guess if I do, I'll come out here and increase the buffer size, but for now I'm gonna leave that alone. All the other options are the same. And again, I just let iOS do the thinking. And again, if you are if you have additional apps and so forth that you're trying to integrate or, you know, maybe with your audio bus or something, you, you can figure all that out separately. But generally speaking, I just let iOS do the thinking. Um, MIDI input, it's the same as the PC. If you intend to use an external controller, keyboard, um, you need to route it. So this is where you can route your interfaces coming into Zen Beats. Um, even the um, additional MIDI options down below are the same. The MIDI output, again, if you intend to route signals from Zen Beats to some external device like a sound module or a sampler, you'd want to set up the output route as well here. Uh, the plugin section uh, will only be available here for the iOS users. Uh, Mac users, PC users, uh, Android doesn't allow for third-party plugins, so that won't be available to you. Uh, with iOS devices, we have something called Audio Units plugins that we use. And um, if I want to, after I install ZenBeats, I can scan for any plugins I've got out there, any Audio Units plugins. Um, if for some reason one of them falls off the radar, I can rescan and get those back. And so that's just a little bit of information about the uh, minor differences between the setup for Mac PC and then for your other types of devices, iOS and Android. Well, let's take a quick look at the other menu options in the main menu. Here you're gonna find the store where it takes you to the Roland store. We were there just a moment ago. We can use the exit full screen option to come out of full screen mode, or we can go back into full screen mode using the same option. Uh, we also have, within the context of the menu, we have help. So we have a few different options, YouTube videos, there's a privacy policy, there's a support page on Roland's website where you can log a support case. And then if you wanna see what version of Zen Beats you're running, you can click on about Zen Beats. And then you can see what version you're running, making sure you're running the latest and greatest. So just a couple other things we wanted to point out before we wind things down. And of course, coming up in future videos, we're gonna learn how to utilize the loop maker view, the timeline view, how to assemble beats, how to assemble complete songs, tips and tricks and so forth. So if there's anything in particular that you'd like to learn more about, please leave a comment. And thanks for watching.